up until Apple introduced us to the fingerprint unlocking on the iPhone 5S in 2013. We all relied on PIN or long password. Android World rapidly embraced the trend and it soon became a must-have feature on even budget smartphones. Then came iPhone's 10th anniversary with Face ID to spark conflict of interest. The other phone makers started searching for alternatives because of their higher price, complexity, and the fact that Face ID setup needs a notch in a device. And here is where the in-display fingerprint scanner pattern started. There are generally two types of in-display fingerprint scanners optical and ultrasonic scanner. At the surface, they function the same, but underneath, both system and protection are dramatically different in terms of unlocking. I'm comparing them so you can pick what suits your usage. Let's have a look at how they work. On both sensors, the setup process is simple. Light press on a screen to complete the fingerprint data capture by 100%. Process time on both sensors is usually the same, but the function behind it is entirely different. The optical sensor captures the fingerprints to the image during setup and stores the data on the device. The screen lights up to illuminate the fingerprint when you press the screen to authenticate your identity. The image of your screen is taken by a tiny camera behind the display and then compare it to the recorded image. The ultrasonic fingerprint scanner, as its name suggests, uses very high frequency sound. The waves are used to map users' fingerprint data. The complete kit contains a transmitter as well as receiver. Therefore, some of the pressure of the pulse is absorbed as a user scans his finger on the glass, and some of it bounces back to the sensor. It is composed of ridges, pores and other features special to each fingerprint. Mechanical stress can be measured by the sensor to measure the strength of the returning ultrasonic pulse at various points on the scanner, resulting in a highly detailed 3D reproduction of the scanned fingerprint. This data is used to match with the existing fingerprint data on the device. Speed and Accuracy First, let us admit the fact these in-display fingerprint scanners lag behind their physical counterparts, which are mostly found at the device pack. The ultrasonic ones have an upper edge when contrasting the two side by side. The optical fingerprint scanner need to produce an accurate 2D fingerprint image. As a result, more pressing is expected on display than normal. This is not disappointing but coming from a physical scanner, it might feel slow. Ultrasonic fingerprint scanner needs only fingerprint pulse data and therefore only a slight touch is needed to validate the device identity. Qualcomm claims there is a 250 millisecond delay to activate, easily covered by capacitive fingerprint scanners. The optical one could get hit and miss for some when it comes to accuracy. The user may have pressed less or more and the camera may have failed to create a detailed image to unlock the handset. Often, the scanner does not operate with wet fingers because the reproduced 2D image will not be as accurate with the moisture on it. The ultrasonic scanner is little more powerful. It fits very well with wet fingers. Qualcomm claims that the sensor has an error rate of around 1%, which is perfectly acceptable with today's standards. If you are enjoying this video or if you like this kind of videos, a sub would be highly appreciated. Security The optical scanner uses a 2D fingerprint image to authenticate the user. This does raise security issues as you can do without a lot of effort. The ultrasonic only confirms the user with the detailed 3D model of the fingerprint, which is based on pulse, ridges, and pores. It is as secure as Face ID. Okay, here is a question that who manufactures them? Synaptix manufactures the optical in display fingerprint scanners that are used on Oppo and Vivo products. Goodix makes the one used in Huawei devices, such as Huawei Porsche Design Mate RS. Qualcomm manufactures the ultrasonic fingerprint scanner. This scanner is officially known as the Sense ID and supports smartphones running Snapdragon 855 as an option if the manufacturer wants to include additional hardware. Qualcomm's configuration is also planned to support the Alliance protocols for Fast Identity Online FIDO, which can be used for online passwordless authentication. FIDO does so without any of the sensitive fingerprint information being transmitted to the cloud or through networks that could be compromised. And the last, which devices are using in-display fingerprint scanners? Because it is more of a cheaper alternative to the ultrasonic scanner, there is a big range of devices that rock optical scanner. All of the Chinese smartphone manufacturers, including Vivo, Oppo, Xiaomi, OnePlus and Huawei, ship their flagship phones with optical scanners. Even the Oppo, 
Vivo and Samsung A50 upper mid-range models integrate optical display scanners. The ultrasonic fingerprint scanner only supports the Snapdragon 855 platform and only big flagships are using it because it's complicated and costly. The most recent example is the Galaxy S10, S10 Plus and S20 Ultra. That's all for now. Thanks a lot for watching guys. My name is Hamza. This is Tech Filter and I'll catch you in the next one.